I'm Wan Seok Kim from Samsung Medical Center, Seoul, Korea. My topic will be the what is the recent advances in, in NKT cell lymphoma treatment. As you know, the NKT cell lymphoma is relatively rare. T cell malignancies in all around the world, but it's relatively common in Far Eastern Asian countries and South America. Before we treat the patient with a CHOP or CHOP-based chemotherapy, but through the experience from myself or other investigators, CHOP is not totally inefficient treatment because the tumor cells are expressing high level of PGRAC proteins. Instead, this tumor is quite sensitive to erasporogenase and radiation. Therefore, the treatment strategy is based on, in the case of other limited stage disease, radiation containing, and advanced stage, the erasporogen containing chemotherapy is quite important. For the treatment of localized NKT cell lymphoma, before we treated them also the chop with the radiation, but it is, the outcome was quite disappointing. Nowadays, we are treating the patient with concurrent matters of earlier radiation followed by some chemotherapy that affected by PGRAC proteins. But based on the recent advances, if you select well and efficient chemo regimens, the sequential chemo first followed by radiation can give us quite comparable outcomes. Therefore, you, you should choose a project containing chemo regimen with chemo radiation in the case of stage one and two disease. But either one of them, the radiation alone and the chemotherapy alone is not efficient, sufficient. Therefore, you should combining both regimen. The sequence is not matter anymore. In case of advanced stage, the NRAS progenase containing chemo regimen is quite important, like a SMILE or Aspamatex or the quite recently PGMOX is also one of the, the efficient regimens. With that, you can expect around 40 to 50 percent of cures. Like the cure rate with uh, combining with uh, autologous or allogeneic transplantation. But still there was a debate that autologous transplantation is really have a low. And, but at the same time, the allotransplantation has a high treatment related mortalities. Therefore, the outcome is quite comparable, auto versus allotransplant. But the role of transplant is not so clear yet. In case of relapsed refractory disease, from the observation of high expression of PDL1, we are giving them the, the PD1 or PDL1 inhibitors. With that, we, you can expect around 40 to 60% of response rate with a 20 to 40% of complete response. In, in cases that who achieved complete response, the response is quite durable. But still, we we have no enough data to support what is the the the, the biomarkers to predict the response of the in checkpoint inhibitors. Anyway, we are moving from the ERAS progenase and radiation, and with the checkpoint inhibitors, the total outcome is to quite improved comparing with the previous historical ones. So in the futures. The positioning and the combination of RS progenase, checkpoint inhibitors, and radiation. Also, the transplant is uh, can be the next step for the future treatment. Thank you.